So our next next session is on personal agility, your game changer. Niroshan Madhapich is going to present. He is an agile delivery manager. He works with organization to deliver high profile project and optimize delivery strategies. As an agile coach, he helps organizations with agile transformation strategies. As a speaker, his purpose is to educate and inspire his spark discussion and motivate change through game changing agile strategies. So I just hand over to Niroshin to self introduce himself briefly and uh, move on to the session. Thank you, Jenya. Appreciate it. Hello, everyone. So let me uh, start the presentation itself. Uh, that has a quick introduction about myself, sharing the, the screen. Yeah, so my topic for the day is uh, personal agility, your game changer, because uh, I, I have witnessed uh, personal agility, the term itself help, helping my life. And I have a, I have a uh, you know, absolutely uh, surprising, uh, case study, success story, that's my own daughter who is just 10 year old, right? Uh, unfortunately, I, you know, I, I couldn't bring her today, uh, but my plan was to just get her to speak up a few words as well due to her schedule, you know, she's not here. But you know, the, the story is that uh, I have been able to coach her to be a speaker, joining my keynote sessions, addressing hundreds of people, together with me simply because it's nothing 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 magical it's just that you know embedding uh, inserting some of the concept that i'm gonna share with you today to her her schedule her mindset more than uh, it's the practices it's the it's the mindset right the moment you you have the right mindset that's the point you're gonna do great because i mean if you think of your life compare compare your your success story with with a very, very well uh, success person. Example, if you look at yourself uh, as a uh, agilist with a very credible person, right? Uh, the, if you ask the question, where what's the big difference, right? The, the person that you think of, right? If you, if you look at, uh, let's say Ken, right? Uh, or uh, Jeff Sutherland, Ken Schauber, right? Uh, or any, C, uh, any, any CTZ, uh, any any uh, certified trainer the the difference that you see would be in the mindset everything starts there right so my story is that personally i have been able to adopt uh, some of these strategies uh, really well and uh, i'm able to coach my 10 year old daughter to step out of her comfort zone so what i'm going to share with you today are the same strategies that that works for me that works for my 10 year old daughter right so if you if you know the toastmasters i'm being part of toastmasters you know that you know there are hundred thousands of people being part of it but you know their 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 obstacle might be their mindset right just having having to practice something itself won't won't you make great right you've got to step out you've got to execute the things much faster and effectively all right so with that let me introduce myself i work uh, as the head of projects at Vetstoria, which is a veterinary-based uh, uh, software development organization. Uh, I do the agile transformation uh, there. Uh, in addition to that, I also work, work as an independent trainer and a, and a you know, keynote speaker. Uh, so if you want to follow me, uh, you can simply uh, type hash Agile Nero in any of these uh, platforms, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, Facebook, or Instagram. You can easily uh, see what what I have been uh, doing in uh, during the last few years. So my email address is malampiti at gmail .com, So you can get in touch with me as well. So uh, first, I would like to give a big thank to uh, the organizing committee for organizing uh, such an event, as well as inviting me as a speaker. So with that, I'm going to jump in. Right. Uh, so I actually have been able to work beyond just the term agility. You know what? Uh, if you are just stuck with the term agile, that's a lot of resistance that you will see around you, 
right? The moment you utter the word agile, there are hundreds of people resisting uh, even without listening to what you're going to say, right? So one way of getting getting your message across, uh, adopting uh, agile strategies is also not to talk about it, right? Just, just to be agile. Uh, so the moment you start speaking a lot about these terms, uh, it, it, you know, you, you, you're going to face a lot of challenges. So uh, I managed to get a, bo a book co-authored with my colleague Dino uh, Pashala from Aus Australia during the COVID season. Uh, so what I talk about there is purely personal agile concepts. So I, I branded it as double your value through personal branding. So if you if you want to grab it, that's available in Amazon. Uh, go and just search for this particular title, right? Double your value through personal branding. So you'll get this. And 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 I'll be also offering some uh, free offers and discounted offers series, uh, soon. Watch, look out for that. So with that, let's let's start, right? So I'm gonna start my topic with a little clip that I did about six months ago with my daughter. Here it is. Have a listen. It's going to take a little while. It's the richest place on earth. Hold on. Let, let me replay. The graveyard is the richest place on earth. Because it's here that you will find all the hopes and dreams that were never fulfilled. The books that were never written. The songs that were never sung. The inventions that were never shared. The cures that were never discovered. All because someone was too afraid to take that first step, keep with the problem, or determine to carry out their dream. Don't let this happen to you. Invite us for your next. All right. What do you think? So this this was this was uh, just forty eight seconds video that we just uh, shooted uh, in a very, very random uh, manner. We never planned for it. Then, you know, suddenly, you know, something came to my mind and just suggested just before dropping my daughter to her school, right? This is the, the, this is the, the absolute time I parked the car to, you know, take her out and then, you know, drop her to school. Like, you know, it was like 100 meter walk. So I just said, you know, uh, daughter, you know, let's, let's do a quick video. She was like, what? So I said, yes, let's do a quick video and it's not going to take even a minute. So we just did that video, right? And 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 you see, uh, so again, if I just show you that, right, the, the reactions that I got is around, uh, it does not show the, the views here. So we got about 30,000 plus views globally, 686 reactions, 48 comments. This this is one of the viral videos that I have ever produced, right? And that just happened so so randomly, right? Similarly, I'm sure you know all of you want to do great. All of you want to you know be a great person, great great agilist, great professional, great entrepreneur, right? But the thing is that you know sometimes your success story is just not not planned right and it cannot be planned so you have to keep trying you have to keep executing your plans so that you will see some progress day in day out so that's that you know that's the starting point that i want to say so while i'm talking about this i want you to let me press on this otherwise it's not big enough i want you to uh, just type uh, in the comment section uh, in the meet chat uh, answering this question the question is what prevents you from succeeding can you think of don't think about you know 100 things just I, I want you to think just one thing the top challenge the top obstacle that you face personally what does prevent you from succeeding can you please put that down in the comment section probably during the q and a I'm gonna pick that up, yeah? So again, uh, my ask is for you to answer this question in the chat section of the Meet, uh, 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 meet link, 
right? The same video uh, link. Uh, so there's a chat section. Please put your answers there. So we're gonna kind of, I'm gonna try to uh, pick them during the Q&A, all right? With that, let's move on. So if you want to do great, if you want to adapt some of the personal agile strategies, the very first thing, the first thing that I want you to start doing is being clear about your personal vision. Because there's a, there's a greater concept behind what I'm going to say. Now, if you look at anything around you, including your own house, including a vehicle, including a big building, including anything that you see around you, everything started with a single thought. Everything physically created was a mental creation before, right? Therefore, if you want to become great, your starting point has to be your mental creation. Mentally, you need to see, you need to envision what you want to become. Where do you want to head in another 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years, right? If you don't see that, if you, if you can't envision that, you're not going to do great. Because all what you would do is just act on the urgent priorities, right? So that's, I mean, we are, we, we are victims of that. So that's the first thing, right? So I, uh, let me introduce your template, right? So this is coming from my book, Personal Vision Statement. All what you have to do is just talk about two things, right? Number one, put down one single statement, explaining what you want to become. So I'm sure if you ask that question now, most of you will not have that clarity. Now, my question to you is that if you are not clear what you want to become, how can you become what you want to become? Because you don't know what, what exactly you want to become, right? So you need to get that crystal clear because that's the first thing that I did with my daughter, right? So she knows after 20 years' time, how, how does her future look like? As, as her father, I, I can envision it because if she does something now, that's probably what is leading to 20 years' time, right? So that's why the, the vision has to be clear now. So secondly, talk about what matters to you most. In her case, two things, right, at a, at a primary level. One, become uh, becoming successful, right, becoming successful in her studies and, you know, leading to some uh, professional domain. The second thing is mastering two competencies. Number one is speaking. Number two is singing. Now, if if she does not have that clarity at this point, it's going to be a slow journey for her. She's going to wait another minute, you know, few years, at least 10, 15 years before she thinks about all these things, right? So this does not affect her childhood, but it just gives her, empowers her to do what she does in a much more strategic way. Right. So it's the same thing that has to happen with you. The second thing is finding out what matters to you is quite challenging. Now, I mean, we all know that we need to do what matters to us, but the problem would be, how do I know it? Now, let me introduce one practice from Management 3.0. So if you haven't come across that, put that down, Management 3.0, which is a which is a mind blowing management mindset. Right. Uh, so study it but you know this is this practice coming from that now if, if you want to find out what matters to you this practice which is called personal maps will greatly help so all what you have to do is write down your name in middle of a paper right then start thinking what do i really want to work on right now in this example right uh, so Zain uh, thinks about home, education, work, hobbies, families, friends, values, goals. This might be totally different to you. That is fine, but that's you, right? So you need to then uh, go deeper and, and, and dive into each and every aspect. Example, uh, education. What exactly you want to do? Now she says University of Berlin, right? Uh, now, if you are not someone who's gone there, you know, you this is your dream. If you are someone there, you want to ensure that you want to get that degree completed, right? And she says medicine and philosophy. So this kind of mind mapping will help you to visualize what you want to become, who you are currently. Yeah. So get that done. The next thing is 
another another practice that has greatly helped me during my last five years that I believe I managed to kind of uh, increase my earnings hugely is due to the adoption of this particular practice that is OKR. OKR stands for objectives and key results. Now, we all know how to define objectives, but we are not good at knowing what key results what we want to achieve right now example if i say this particular training my objective is to deliver a perfect speech ensuring that you are you are you're happy i mean that is a good objective right but there the problem is that the clarity is not good enough because when i say i want to deliver the best presentation ever i mean that's a good enough objective but beyond that i need to know what is the engagement that i want to what is the the impression that i have to create what is you know may, maybe i'm generating some leads through this right so i have to be clear on those things if i do not do that what happens is the, i end up doing a nice presentation you also you know really get excited happy about it that's it right beyond that how do i drive the engagement right that is where you have to talk about the key results so let me give you a template for that so this is again coming from my book so uh, this is not something i invented this is this is something that is adapted in the agile world right uh, even you know this coming from google uh, so what they say is define your objectives and each objective should have three to five key results why three to five if you are not able to achieve all five at least you can hit three three of them that makes you somewhat successful gets you closer to your end goal right uh, so uh, objectives and key results uh, are also flexible adaptive you can adjust them right and of course you know in order to get get here you can use a, a framework like smart objectives so your objectives has to, to follow uh, some criteria like being specific timely measurable etc right on top of it you define your key results so these key results are what you are trying to achieve example uh, in terms of uh, keynote speaking right myself and my daughter has clear key results established for the given year how many keynote speeches that we want to end up doing how many leads that you want to generate how many workshops that you want to conduct all that have to be clearly identified. Otherwise, your goals are vague and will not do any good, right? So the other practice that will change your game that probably haven't you know, been part of your agenda yet is knowing your value proposition, period. If you do not know this, if you do not know your value proposition, it's very little growth you can achieve, right? What does this mean? So this is coming from product management of uh, a child, right? But you know, this is this works for personal, personal agility, personal perspective as well. Now, as an individual, I need to be very clear what are the the gains, right? That that I can uh, address. What are the pain points that I can address? What are the basic needs that, that I can address? For example, being a speaker in this forum, I need to be clear what i'm gonna touch base on now if i just become a, a traditional speaker i can just touch base on the basic needs right you just need to hear about the personal agility and you know you're happy but i want to go beyond that how i want to address some of your pain points that's why i brought some of these uh, game changing strategies right and then you know in the next few minutes you will see much more uh, valuable concepts and it's 30 minutes i'm not gonna just talk about one thing and then you know go go deeper my approach is kind of give you some uh pointers right and i'm sure out of out of the audience here at least few of you gonna gonna go beyond what you hear you're gonna go back and start studying that's exactly what i want to achieve here right so be clear what pain points you can relieve right you in, in in terms of your career your your profile you need to have certain pain relievers you know people will reach out to you due to the pains that they go through wanting you to solve them relieve them then gain creators so those are like you know are not big pain points but you know these will enhance their life experience the basic 
product and services are, you know, being a speaker, you have to speak up, right? <laughs> you can't be a speaker without speaking. And when you speak, you have to be do, you know, you have to be good enough. Otherwise, they are not going to invite you again. So that's that, right? It's just covering the basic, bare minimal areas. So if you can visualize your value proposition using this canvas, I think the next action is to see what exactly you can do next, right? So with that, uh, it's inevitable that execution is key. It, it, it's, it's unarguable, right? Unarguably, execution is key because no matter how much big your plans are, if you don't execute your plans, you're not gonna move ahead at all. That is why I said my 10 year old daughter has been able to execute her plans at the age of 10, right? So this is where all the other agile concepts come in, right? Uh, think big, act small, right? You have a bigger dream uh, for 20 years, but you got to act now. How? You got to act small. So uh, Will Smith said something nice. Will Smith said, if you want to build a big wall, you're not going to say, I'm building a big wall. You're going to say, I'm going to lay this brick as perfectly as a brick could be laid. And you do that every single day. Sooner, you're going to have a big wall. So this is exactly how it works. This is exactly how it's going to be for my daughter, right? At the age of 10, she's going to do little things towards her, her 20 years career, right? And these little things will make a big, big profile, big person. Yeah. And, and uh, personally, right, being able to convince her, take her to an audience of hundreds, you know, about uh, 400, 500 people of graduates and professionals itself is a big step. Right. But if you look at the big dream, that is a small step. Right. If she does not walk up to the stage now, to be a speaker, she has to do that at one point of time. The question is when she will do it. If she does not do it now, she will wait for ages, right? Think about you. Probably some of you are, so you are just stuck somewhere, right? Thinking of big, big dreams, but you're not acting enough, right? Start with a small, tiny step, daily basis, and that will take you to your bigger dream. So personal agility is about being empowered, right? So today when I... Uh, when I was, you know, getting ready to this, I, you know, I kind of lacked the motivation. So uh, as a speaker, right, as a motivator, I need to find the strategies to get back, right, uh, to the motivated state. If I'm not able to do it, then, you know, I'm going to waste a day. I'm going to waste a few days. I'm going to waste a week. Let not that happen to you, right? Because there are times where you are not motivated enough. So you need to find out how to get back. So, uh in your personal agile journey, one thing that will definitely have to be adapted, has to be adapted, is time boxing. Time boxing allows you to focus. Because when you know that I have just other things unnecessarily, right? The second thing is prioritization. Without prioritization, no agility. Prioritization is a major aspect of agility. This is the biggest... Uh, key difference uh, compared to the traditional world. Traditional world of project management believed in work breakdown structures, big schedules, right? The schedule is pretty much sealed. Agile is a paradigm shift. Agile says, you know, don't stick to a schedule for months, weeks. You got to reprioritize. You got to, got to adjust your prioritize based on what is most valuable, right? So. When you're uh, deciding the priority, look at this thing, right? You need to look at the importance. You need to look at the urgency. It's not just urgent stuff. It's not just uh, important stuff as well, both together. So what you need to do, pick first is urgent and important ones. You do have to do them immediately because you can't defer them, right? What comes next is something here. Decide when you will do it, right? Important, but not urgent. So it's very important, but not so urgent. You can you can kind of decide when to do it. You can schedule it. And when it's uh, low important, low, uh, less urgent, then you can definitely do it later. 
And if it's high risk, high sorry, high urgent, right? Highly urgent and uh, highly uh, low important, you can delegate it to someone else because you know the value it can deliver is very little compared to something here. So this is this is something that I would uh, use a daily basis in order to prioritize the work that I have to work on. So this allows me to do a lot of work, right? The other thing that you have to adopt personally is limiting your work in progress. Absolute must. If you do not get this right, you will struggle a lot, right? That's the secret of me being able to uh, do quite a few things within a shorter period of time, right? Does not mean I'm going to work on each and everything at the same time. No. I work on something, get that done, and then move into the next one, right? This strategy allows me to focus solely on a given engagement. It doesn't have to be just one. It can be just few. Whatever the optimal level of, of you, uh, you know, your, your, your capacity. Some of you can, can just do one thing at a time. Some of you can do a few things. So you need to figure out what is your optimal level of engagement, right? So different commitments is is basically uh, keeping something that can wait, right? If you can't, if you are not good at deferring commitments, you are not going to do great. So when you want to defer, I want you to introduce one concept that will, that will definitely help you. That is, when you are deferring, you need to ask the question, how long can I defer this? What is the last responsible moment this can wait everything that you do will have a last responsible moment so if you can wait until that moment you are perfectly all right but if you cross that limit you're gone right you compromise on something either quality either either you know uh, the market either the pricing whatever so you need to figure out the last responsible moment for everything that you work on all right so now uh, Rohit, I, I just want to check the timing. Uh, how long do I have? Uh, you have another nine minutes, actually. Sorry? Nine minutes. Nine minutes. Perfect. All right. That's great. So, OK. So the next thing uh, that I'm going to introduce is uh, probably uh, you're seeing it for the first time. Be, although you have been in Agile teams, uh, and let me assure, let me give you the assurance that this is, a, this is what I personally use. This is called personal Kanban. So this is a, this is a kind of uh, uh, term that I invented. So there are a lot of jargons around personal agility, right? Uh, at one point, I didn't want to kind of uh, because there's another group of uh, colleagues or professionals who claim that they they kind of came up with personal agility. So I want to do the justice when I came up with this. Uh, probably, you know, this is this adapted uh, from their concept, right? It's kind of, uh, you know, the, the innovation technique use uh, steal and tweak, right? You kind of get, get some, some observations uh, and then, you know, tweak it. So it's kind of that, right? Uh, so personal Kanban, uh, it's a Kanban board particularly designed for personal agility, right? Helping the individuals to adopt the right habits and practices. So how it works is this. So it uses uh, the major concepts that I spoke about. It allows you to time box. It allows you to prioritize. It allows you to defer commitments. It allows you to limit the work in progress, right? So what you see here are the time boxes. Now, generally in a Kanban, what you see are the columns like, to do in progress review done. I mean, good enough, right? But the, the other problem when it comes to the personal uh, priorities is that the time box. Uh, if you are in a team, you can get, gather together, you know, discuss the things, you know, put a sprint and, you know, work on. So particularly being Kanban, following Kanban, one of the challenges you might face is limiting the time boxes. So. What this does is this allows you to think about different time boxes. And these are the time boxes I'm introducing. First one is the goal. So I want you to think about the next one year, not longer than one year, 12 months. What are your yearly goals? Right? Example, myself, I would say 
I want to deliver minimum of five international features into the audience is bigger than 100 people, right? So that's one goal. So that's a very high level kind of a vague uh, goal that, that can I just come up with and put that down. Then what I do is in order to do five speeches uh, agile on agile uh, in the global uh, setting, what do I have to do in the next three months? Because if I can figure what I have to do in the next three months, probably I'm getting closer to my yearly goal, right? Our problem is we think about the 12 months, but we don't think about the next three months, right? Then your focus goes away. You are, you are not much focused. The third time box is this month. What do I have to do this month in order to get there? Then this week, what do I have to do within this week? Now, even Rohit, you know, uh, I think Ajay reached out to me. When Ajay reached out to me, it's very clear that this leads to one of my goals, right? Being an international conference, I mean, this is getting closer, right? And, and you know, I would focus that for a week, right? Then today, now, when I woke up today, my question is, what do I do today, right? So if I don't have something to do today that is in line to my yearly goal, I'm probably, uh, you know, getting slowed down, yeah? So that's how it works, right? So if you don't have something today, you have to look for something tomorrow. If you don't get something tomorrow, you have to look, look for something day after. Otherwise, your yearly goal will not be a possibility, right? The next thing is that, right? So within the day, I might have to do five things, right? That is still big list, right? Now I want you to be clear what exactly work in progress. Now, there's only one thing, few things that can happen at a time. That is work in progress. So I basically move that card, whatever I start working on into this. Now, soon after this, I actually have to correct uh, 40 plus uh, MBA assignments, case studies, right? So that's my next job. So I'm very clear what I have to do the next moment. So if I don't have that clarity, I'm not going to manage that well. Okay, then done. As soon as I get something done, I pass it to done. So, so this gives me a greater sense of achievement, greater sense of satisfaction when I see that things are going going smoothly. Right. The second thing is swim lens. So, the picture that you see, the background, the background, the pink color uh, picture is the Kanban board that I have given my daughter. So, if you look into my LinkedIn uh, wall. You will see that like few months ago, six months ago, I posted uh, one of the pictures from her Kanban. So what I have done is I have divided her priorities into uh, quite a few, right? Uh, one is school, second is singing, third is speaking, fourth is sports, right? Whatever matters to you can be grouped using swim lane. So this gives greater clarity for you to move on. So you don't mix up the priorities, right? Uh, so just doing one thing won't help you. So if you want to be a great person, great professional, great entrepreneur, it has to be a balance, balance act. So how do you strike the balance? Use a swim lens. Third is think what matters to you. That's where the goals come into play. So from the vision, from the OKRs, agree. Come up with your yearly goals. Put them down here, right? Do not focus uh, uh, on many goals, right? Just have few steady ones and that will be your major core focus within the year now for me right it's not going to change the high level goals will not change example being a speaker right growing as a speaker uh, that will not change right what i do will change but my goal remains the same being being you know basically a mastering agile uh, gaining more agile competency the certifications will will have to be another goal so i'll put that as a goal then Every in time box, I define the tasks, right? Pick one area that matters to you. Write down one goal for the next 12 months. That's what we discuss, right? So then it takes about the time boxes. You see that, uh, you know, uh, for each time box, you take one step ahead, one, one step, at a, uh, step at a time. Right. Think about your monthly goals, put them down and then think about the next week. Right. This week. So this gives a greater focus, actually. Right. And then when you look at what you do today, you see the connection to your yearly goal. Now, let me tell you, one of the biggest problems that you face is that, right, 
that connection is not established. So if you end up doing urgent ones, which are not linked up with your early goals, you end up being just average. You are, you are a victim of your tactical tasks, tactical priorities. So this is the number one problem that most of us go through, right? If you want to do great, you have to know your day. You know, have to know your week. You have to know your month. You have to know your three months, right? So just to do a bit of study. And I mean, if you look at people, you know, very reputed people, like let's say you're from your own country, uh, you know, some of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, Pichai, right? So, uh, or if you look at Tony Robbins, if you look at Oprah Winfrey, or if you look at, uh, any any great person look at a cricketer right so any any famous cricket i mean they will know what they have to do within the day they will know their next week schedule this week schedule they will know their monthly schedule otherwise it's mostly impossible for anyone to do great because you become a victim of just tactical ones urgent priorities doing focusing on urgent stuff will not make any one of us great so that's the biggest lesson i learned right there can be many urgent things but if, if they are not important urgent uh, ones they are not important still urgent i i might defer them i will defer them right what i have to pick first is most important most urgent ones because they can't wait right and they are important so the value it can deliver is huge so for me even uh even uh in a, a team setting this is the same thing guys right so uh, if you look, look. If you reflect back, right? If you if you ask one of your developers what you work on, right? Uh, there are um, many times where your developers and uh, team members will say, "I'm working on something which is." You see that it's not important. Why do you, your question is why do you work on that, right? Because that's that's something missing in their priority, the way they pick up the priority. So if they do not pick up the the most important, most valuable priority now we will not be able to deliver the most important, most valuable deliverables within the week, right? So it's, 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 it's inevitable that every one of us focus on the absolute valuable priorities, absolutely valuable investments and what matters to us. And with that, you know, I'm gonna end up my uh, talk. Uh, it was very intensive, uh, I purposely made it. I introduced a lot of pointers for you, right? The intention is that uh, not to give you just basics, but, you know, just to ignite your thinking with some of the concepts that, of course, you have to go back and study, right? 30 minutes will not, will not empower you with everything that you need. You know, my intention uh, was to give you the pointers that will absolutely change your game. Yeah. So with that, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so if you want to get in touch with uh, me, uh, follow the, the hashtag Agile Nero and my daughter's uh, hashtag is Dahamsa Speaks. So if you want to look look at some of the work that you have done, you can simply uh, search for these two hashtags. With that, uh, Rohit uh, would like to hand it over to you for maybe Q&A. Uh, hi, Nirushan. I'll be taking the question answers as uh, Rohit is facing problem in his mic. Sure, sure. So we can take one or two questions because we don't have much time. So sure. first question is from Rohit itself. He's asking, what is the ideal time you suggest in terms of short, medium, and long term for OKR? OK, so the, the longest time uh, should be three months. Shortest time uh, should be just daily. <laughs> so it, it will not be called uh, OKRs when it comes to daily uh, uh, goals, right? It will be tasks. So basically, your OKRs can be three months long. Uh, Genia. Uh, so you break that down into uh, priorities that will end up in your Kanban board. Got it? So if, if I if I actually share share the presentation again quickly, right? So I can visually present that. So if you look at this, right? Uh, so this is what I'm talking about, right? So this is where the OKR comes in. So the OKR can be defined, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, the goals, of course, you know, you can use the same format. But for me, OKR is a three month goal, right? Uh, so you use the same format for that uh, yearly goals. You have the key results defined, but those key results will be somewhat high level than three months key results. 
when it comes to three months, you probably need to decide what exactly you are trying to hit. Yeah. So then these things, right? This month, these are priorities. So you decide the priority. For example, I would decide uh, I'm going to do a workshop, a uh, remote workshop on uh, management 3.0. That's one of the goals. So that is linked to the, the OKR. That is three months long. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, yeah. So the next question is from Priyank. How it's different to the personal Kanban by Jim Benson? Sorry? How it's different to the personal Kanban by Jim Benson? I haven't come across this. <laughs> <laughs> If you can, mm -hmm. I haven't heard of uh, that's a that's a person, right? You mentioned, yeah. No, How it is different to the personal kanban by Jim ben Benson. So I haven't seen, but you know, uh, so the difference. I mean, this is adapted by uh, adapted from uh, uh, the the personal agility system uh, developed by uh, Peter Stevens. Uh, who is a CTC uh, that that uh, used to work with me uh, some time back. Uh, so, uh, you know, based on that, I actually uh, adapted this. Yeah, so the d difference is it, it gives you a different structure to uh, progress with your personal priorities. Okay. Thank you, yeah. Narushin. Thank you for your session. It was a great, wonderful learning from you. Perfect. My pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for the opportunity. Thank yeah, you. Appreciate yeah. it. It's our pleasure. Yeah.